with theory why the, the major three is so interesting and oh man they're following up with some michael human nature it's a good morning today but uh yeah the the four chord the five chord the one chord in in uh imagine john lennon there four five and one are the normal chords you could say you know in layman's terms the normal chords in theory terms, they're the diatonic chords, meaning that they, they belong together. They come from the same place. If you were to organize all of the notes that you hear in the song, and the harmony, and the melody, usually, a lot of pop music, you're going to get a certain arrangement of notes in terms of their relationships to each other from low to high. Fancy word for that is a scale. You order the notes from low to high in a song. The four, the five, and the one major chords are all from the major key. So you have this entire scale, which spell out the, the key, which uh, results in certain chords feeling like they belong, certain chords feeling like they don't belong. <clears throat> so I go into all this diatonic harmony in the harmony module, basically explaining how we get these chords that belong to the key. Starts with intervals, and it moves on to thirds, and then it moves on to triads, and then different kind of configurations of those triads. But the interesting chord here is the major three because it's not diatonic. It's a non-diatonic chord. The previous video where I uh, sang with Ellen uh, on Madonna's uh, Take a Bow, it was not Say Goodbye. I thought it was Say Goodbye. She does sing Say Goodbye. Take a bow, but anyway, and take a bow. There's also some very, very interesting non-diatonic chords, and, and uh, just one of these basic things you want to get a grasp on when you're getting into, you know, harmony. In in a kind of music theory approach to music, something that's useful, something that's practical to wrap your head around first is this concept of diatonic harmony versus non-diatonic harmony. Non-diatonic harmony doesn't make sense till you understand diatonic harmony, but diatonic harmony is a very, very helpful thing. It help your approach to chord selection, chord substitution, uh, songwriting, arranging. It'll give it all these uh, leaps and bounds, equip you with tools to kind of just increase uh, your, your musical vocabulary harmony-wise. And so uh, the ma major three is a non-diatonic chord, meaning that the chord that you hear there is not what you would expect. And so if we were in the key of C, which I don't know if we are in the key of, well, it's the key of Imagine. I meant to bring my tuning fork. I got a tuning fork just for these videos. Um, I was gonna bring my tuning fork into the car and just hit my wrist like my old choir teacher and, and just listen to it so that I could hear uh, an A440. But um, <clears throat> the idea that um, if you could kind of transpose the song into the key of C, because I don't think Imagine is in the key of C. Um, it might be. But if it were, the chords would be F, and then um, G, and then C, all major chords, followed by an E major that E major has a note in it. If you were to play it on the piano or the guitar, it's a little harder to see on the guitar, but the E major would have a G sharp note. And that G sharp inside the E chord doesn't belong with the C major scale. And in the C major scale, you got a C major chord, an F major chord, G major chord. Those notes in those chords are all C, E, G, F, A, C, G, B, D. They all fit in the key. There's no problem there. There's no unexpected note there, but once you get to the E major, you have a G sharp inside that chord to form the E major triad, E G sharp E. And that same kind of thing is found in uh, the end of um, Street Spirit by Radiohead. 
and uh, you have E minor throughout the entire song with some melodic movement on top in Street Spirit. But suddenly, at the end, you have E major. And what that does, folks, is it in introduces a, a magnetism back to the note A. And G sharp in this E chord catches your ear and it goes, whoa, whoa, non-diatonic chord. Whoa, G sharp doesn't belong in the key, whoa. And it grabs your attention because it's kind of a dissonant note. It's kind of strange. Your ear has been hearing G, 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 G the whole time. There's a G in the C chord. There's a G in the G major chord. Um, there's a G in his melodies, you know, he's singing, which in the key of C would be a G. And so you keep hearing G, 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 and all of a sudden G sharp comes in and replaces it. And it says, hey, give me your attention. And G sharp, uh, what that does is that eventually sets your ear up for a little bit of a resolution. That note that kind of doesn't belong, it says, whoa, 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 suddenly wants to lean you in to an A. <clears throat> and that happens in Street Spirit. E major is followed by what chord? Those of you who know how to play Street Spirit by very head, it's followed by an A minor. And in Imagine, it's followed by an F. But wait a second, what? F has the note A in it, F-A-C, F-A-C. And you'll hear it when you play the E major and you isolate that G sharp, try it, try it if you're near your instrument, try it. Try to play that G sharp, which is on your third string of the guitar if you're playing a 022100, or if you're playing an E major on the piano, the black key, that G sharp. You'll hear that note. I don't even know if I'm singing G sharp. It'll lean you in to the A. It'll make you kind of pull towards that A, and that A will bring sweet resolution, whether it's in an A minor chord as the root of the chord, the main note of the chord, or if it's the third of the F major chord. And uh, this dude walking by with his paint bucket and bleach probably wonders why the hell I'm talking to a uh, video. But uh, anyway, E major, non-diatonic chord, introduces a new note, that new note gets your ear's attention, and then it wants to pull you in to a note a half step above to resolve that tension. And that's a beautiful thing that non-diatonic harmony does, that uh, normally that type of movement would only be reserved for a few notes in the major scale, from four to three, or from seven to eight, is where you have these kinds of resolutions naturally occurring in the major scale. But with the non-diatonic chord, you can create a new half step tension resolution relationship between two chords w what are you talking about Warren what give it to me in plain English plain English plain English says <clears throat> can't, can't speak right now plain English says that if you have tension and resolution in a chord progression we like that human ears like that it's simple half step tension resolution you can see it in much more complex harmonies as well. Just go listen to uh, uh, Everything in Its Right Place uh, by Radiohead. Ellen didn't care for that song at all when, when, she, uh, when she heard it the first time. And um, listen for it in Pyramid Song, listen for it in just a bunch of, bunch of songs. Half Step Resolution Everywhere. It's just like, that's a mountain of songs that I'm only even not even scratching the surface. Half step tension resolution in a chord progression. That's like, that's like the invention of sliced bread. The Earl of Sandwich is credited with the first sandwich. It's like the Earl of Sandwich of music. That's what a half step resolution is. You give it tension, you give it resolution by a half step. Oh man, I can go on and on forever, but I'm already at my destination, so I'm gonna stop it now <laughs> take it easy all right imagine street spirit sliced bread or a sandwich keep on keeping on